What's up, kinfolk? Welcome to the number one college football show. I am your host, RJ Young. Thank you for watching on the Fox Sports app, YouTube, or listening wherever you get your podcast. Today, we have a guest heavy show. We'll be joined by Pittsburgh Mauler linebacker and former Alabama linebacker Ruben Foster to talk about what it's been like for him to play in the USFL. And we got some news about the new expanded college football playoff. But first, I want to get us started with Fox Sports writer Lakin Littman, who covers the Big 12 and Men's and Women's World Cup, about what she saw at the University of Texas during their spring practice period and what she learned after visiting with Texas Christians, real, well, movers and shakers in Sonny Dykes and Chandler Morris. And I believe she even got to talk to Jeremiah Donati. Let's go talk to Lakin. I'm pleased to be joined by Fox Sports writer Lakin Littman, who covers college football, the Big 12 in particular, and has more frequent flyer miles than any of us writers on the staff. She's been to Qatar and exotic places like Fort Worth. Lakin, how you doing? He has very exotic places like Fort Worth. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I wanted to have you on to talk about what is in your backyard, right? Start with the University of Texas and the quarterback derby that wasn't. I feel like I was out in front of this telling everybody Arch Manning was not competing for this job. And this was Quinn Ewers saying, hey, look, I am the guy. Be the assertive uh, quarterback that Steve Sarkeesian has wanted him to be. That said, do you think that Sark got it right in his quarterback pick? Yeah, I feel like, like you said, for people who have really been kind of paying attention to what's going on in Austin, this really was not going to be a quarterback battle. Um, after the spring game, Sarkeesian, I guess, technically for the first time, said in as many words that Quinn Ewers is his starting quarterback. Um, but, you know, I don't think that Arch Manning was going to come in as a true freshman and just went, take the job from a guy who's been here for a little while longer. And, you know, speaking of the spring game, game we all know it's, you know, it's a glorified scrimmage, but Quinn Ewers really looked more impressive than he had last year. He changed his mindset. He changed his body comp. Um, he looked leaner, specifically like in his face, in his core. Uh, he looked confident. He had some really, you know, good long passes. He had that one to Xavier Worthy. He had a touchdown to A.D. Mitchell, who made the spectacular grab in, in the end zone. Um, he never really looked like he was in danger of, of making a mistake or turning the ball over. Um, and after the game, you know, he told reporters that he didn't like where he was at last year. And, you know, after a conversation in the off season with, with Sarkeesian, um, he himself made changes, um, you know, so that he could end up to get to where he wants to be. Now, he obviously didn't say, oh, he didn't really tell us or elaborate where he wants to be, but I think we can all, we can all guess what that, what that means. I think we can. I was also <laughs> taken aback to find out that Malik Murphy is kind of taking the leap, and I'm very excited about that. Quickly, do you think that he has the goods to come in and be a backup quarterback if something were to happen to Quinn Ewers like it did against Alabama last year? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we didn't really get to see him last year because he was injured and he's still not quite 100 percent. That's Murphy I'm talking about. Um, but he made some big time throws in the spring game. I mean, a lot of people in the press box were really you know, surprised to see um, him him play that well. He looked confident. He was poised in the pocket, made some really zippy passes. He had a few perfectly thrown deep balls. One was dropped by DeAndre Moore. Another was a 79-yard touchdown bomb to Jonte Cook. And um, Sarkeesian said afterwards, the sky's the limit for him. And, you know, what's interesting is he did not enter the transfer portal. Um, so he, he wants to be at UT. And I think that, you know, if something were to happen to yours, he would be, he he would come in and, and you know, would have things uh, rolling pretty, pretty seamlessly. I'm excited about Malik Murphy. I've been excited about him since he was a prospect coming out of California. He's got all the tools and it's nice to see that he is finally beginning to show signs of development. You mentioned John Tay Cook. We know about Xavier Worthy. We know about Isaiah Nair, even though he didn't get to play a lot last year. But I'm really curious about the backfield. As you know, Bijan Robinson was drafted at number eight overall in last weekend's NFL draft to the Atlanta Falcons. And I'm very excited for Bijan, character guy, as we talk about. You wrote a great feature at FoxSports.com last year, heading into what is a pivotal year for Texas, because now they get to claim a first round draft pick for the first time since 2015 and the first time on the offensive side of the ball 
since 2005, going into 2006, excuse me, 2006 NFL draft after Vince Young, well, took apart USC in a national championship game. I'm not afraid to say it. That said, <laughs> do you feel good about their backfield and the guys that they have that maybe they have another B. John Robinson back there? Yeah, I think it's hard to really know, you know, what Texas has in the backfield right now, only because Bijan and Roshan Johnson, who was also drafted um, last week, they took the majority of the snaps and they were also, uh, I mean, they played, they played the majority, they played the majority of the snaps. So we don't really know what else they, there was, you know, behind them last year. I mean, there's, uh, we can get excited, I guess. We got a glimpse of Jaden Blue and CJ Baxter. Both of them were top prospects with Baxter. Um, he was a five star coming out of Florida and he was the number one overall running back in his class. Um, both of them got got touches in the spring game. And um, Keelan Robinson comes back from last year. Jonathan Brooks, he returns. And Brooks had, I mean, he was, I guess, technically third string last year, had a big 70 yard touchdown run against Kansas um, last year and a win, a, a UT win. Um, there's also Savian Red, former wide receiver turned running back. Point is, there's a lot of skill. Um, a lot of guys, you know, who could end up being playmakers, um, but we just don't really know. Um, all we know is that Texas has a lot of a lot of good options. I'm really excited about that backfield because I do think they can go five deep. And as with all things, Texas, it's never about do they have the talent? It's about can they get that talent to get to a place where they not only can win multiple games, but play in a Big 12 championship and win one, maybe make the college football playoff for the first time in their history, which leads me to right down the road from you, Texas Christian coming off of not just making it to the college football playoff after losing the Big 12 championship, which I think is really the key here, but as a national runner up, you got to see them at their spring game. How does Chandler Morris look coming back as, well, what was the best quarterback on campus and just didn't get a chance to show it. So we think last year. Well, I actually wasn't at, at their spring game, um, oh, but I did go. I did go visit campus a couple weeks ago, and I talked to Sunny. I talked to a couple of players. Um, I talked to the athletic director, and um, really, kind of the the overall consensus there was, you know, they don't expect to necessarily win or contend for national championships every single year. But now they they know what it's like, and I think it's like one of the most interesting things um, there was that like. The expectations are different. They're higher. But last year they were admittedly, you know, happy to be there. Like they literally said, we came into that national championship game, happy to be there. And they can't use that excuse anymore. Um, but going back to, you know, talking about Chandler Morris, um, of course, we know what happened last year. He was, you know, he earned the starting job, um, was injured, and then Max Duggan took over. Um, but he's projected to be the 2023 starter. Um, uh, but Sonny did just add another quarterback from the portal um, in Oregon State transferred uh, Chance Nolan and he started 20 games over the last three seasons he, he was injured last year so um, he didn't play a ton in, in 2022 but um, I didn't even realize but but Chandler Morris and redshirt freshman Josh Hoover they have one start between them mm -hmm. so at least now they have a guy who can come in he has experience and can push can push the quarterback room I think they also got better offensively, if if you can believe it, even after losing Quentin Johnston and Kendra Miller, along with Max Duggan to the NFL draft and adding guys like JoJo Earl, a Brockenmeyer brother, right? I believe it's Tommy Brockenmeyer. They added on the offensive line, along with Trey Sanders, like Alabama coming through, Jared Wiley coming from Texas. They feel like they have some pieces there for Kendall Bryles to work with. I also am very curious about this being excited to be there at the national championship game because they played like it. It's the worst bowl loss in the history of bowls. And I wonder how much of that sting has stayed with Texas Christian going into this spring and into the summer. Yeah. So Chandler Morris said, I think actually it was after the spring game, he told reporters that, you know, we're not even thinking about that anymore, which is kind of hard to believe because after the, after the national championship game, Sonny Dyke said, you know, this is going to, this, this is going to take a while for this thing to go away. But I did ask him, I said, has this thing gone away? And he hasn't said not a hundred percent yet, but they are completely turned. It seems like they've turned over to looking forward to the fall and, and not, you know, thinking about dwindling on, on what happened in the national championship game. Um, so yeah, I think, I think you can expect them to, maybe not contend for a national championship again, but they're going to make a run at the big 12. I think it's going to be a really, the big 12 is wide open. 
Um, we just talked about Texas and how many weapons they have. TCU's offense, of course, you know, had a ton of turnover, but they returned seven starters on defense. So I don't think that this is maybe they might not make another incredibly surprising shock the world kind of run again this fall. But uh, I think they've got they're they're here to stay is my is what I came away with after after uh, my visit with them. I'm inclined to believe you uh, on two on two fronts. First, the Big 12 is right open with 14 teams. The only year it's going to have that. And what is a pivotal year for every team involved, right? Not the least of which is Texas Christian, who gets to say, hey, we made nothing of Bijan when we went down to Austin and we gave them the business. Texas will want to avenge that loss on its way out with a number of other, well, things to check off before they leave the Big 12. But it does bring around this idea of big games with Texas Christian, right? Because that was what their year was about last year. Every game became a big game because they need to come back to win it up until they couldn't that said they have what I think is one of the most intriguing week one games of 2023 on the schedule and they get to play Colorado at home right at Amon G Carter how do you feel about that game are you excited about it in the way that I'm excited about it I think so <laughs> I mean I'm, I'm super excited I mean who's not excited to see you know coach prime make his d1 power five debut and he's doing it against a team in TCU that you know really needs to win that home opener after the national championship disaster so you know I'm super excited and I think of course Dion will have a ton of people you know from the Dallas Fort Worth area at that game um it's probably going to be you know like the biggest hyped up game of, of week one. And yeah, I'm just excited to see, you know, the, the coach prime era in Colorado begin. As am I, Lakin Littman, who is living in the same space where, well, gave us Deion Sanders, his coaching career, <laughs> Dallas, Fort Worth area. Very excited to have you on the show before I get you out of here though. Yo man, how long is Becky Sauerbrunn going to keep playing on my women's national team? Because it feels like she's been playing on that team since I was a child. <laughs> Yeah, I think that that's fair. Um, she's going to be 38 at this World Cup, but so is Megan Rapino. Um, you know, props to them for, I mean, Becky Sauerbrunn is the captain of this team and she's still starting at center back. I mean, who knows? She has not not told anybody when she plans to retire yet. So may it be years from now. So I can talk <laughs> about a Becky Sauerbrunn playing into her 60s. Lakin Littman, <laughs> who will be in Australia and New Zealand to cover her second World Cup inside of eight months, living her best life. Lakin, thanks so much for joining us here on the number one college football show. Thank you, RJ. My thanks once again to Lakin for joining the show. Read her work at Fox Sports. She's become one of my favorite writers. I was very, very happy to see her hired on last year, and she's been doing nothing but bang up work. Again, she's headed to Australia and New Zealand to cover the Women's World Cup. Well, I fully expect another World Cup win for our women. All right, let's move from that to this news that we got about the college football playoff expansion schedule on Tuesday. So check this out. The Cotton Bowl sent out a release showing us exactly who and what gets to host when and where for the 24 and 25 college football playoffs. So the first round, which features the expanded playoff format, is going to start... December 20th, 2024, with one game on a Friday. And then December 21st, that's a Saturday, with three games. And then you're going to go straight to the quarterfinals, right? December 31st, the Fiesta Bowl. And then January 1st, we're going to play the Peach Bowl, the Rose Bowl, and the Sugar Bowl. And then you're going to have the semifinals, right, on January 9th, a Thursday, for the Orange Bowl. And then you're going to have the Cotton Bowl on January 10th, a Friday, Finally, you're going to end with the college football playoff national championship game on January 20th. And the format looks a lot similar in the 2025. So instead of going over that, let's just talk about what all this means. First, it means that we're playing more football games. Okay. It also means we're going to get started with our bowl schedule literally a week ahead of where we're used to finding out that the New Year's Six Bowls begin to get played. I love that. I do. Okay. I also am already hearing from folks who are going, I hate Thursday games. I hate Friday games. Tough, dude. Like, saying, I get it, right? You're trying to schedule around the NFL because this is our national sport. Our national sport is the National Football League. We do the National Football League like the folks in Canada do hockey, okay? 
you're not going to be able to compete with it. And I understand those of you that watch college football who could give a good damn about the NFL. And here's a secret. They feel the same about our sport. That said, we still got to play football games and we would still like to play those football games. We're not competing against the dominant sport, which is the NFL. I don't like being anybody's little anything. You know that anytime somebody wants to talk about somebody being short as opposed to little, I can't, I, I'm going to give them the business, right? I'm going to catch an attitude about that because I'm five foot five, but you can try me, right? That said, playing three football games that mean something on a Saturday, yo dog, not for nothing, but that's how I live. I wake up 6 a.m., right? I get settled. I watch Big Noon. I go straight into it 11 a.m. Central Time kickoff window, and I'm watching football well until 1 a.m. in the morning, making a top 25. I'm saying, you're going to learn how I live if you're trying to get all of this. And I'm trying to get all of this because everybody that should be in is going to get in. Very, very excited about that. One more time. NFL Wild Card Weekend is going to start more or less the same weekend that we're talking about with the semifinal games. Get over it. Buy a second screen. As a matter of fact, I'm covering the USFL. I'm tweeting about the USFL and the Birmingham Stallions and the New Orleans Breakers who are undefeated teams playing for South Division supremacy. And I got tweets talking about, yo, RJ, the draft is on. Hey, money. Get a second screen. All right? Because that's what I'm doing. You want to watch them read the card? That's great. Watch them play the football too. You're going to have the NFL up. You're going to have college football up. You're going to get all the football that you want. I don't see why people are upset about this. I, I, can't, I can't get upset about watching good football, all right? I cover the sport with the shortest regular season and the longest off season. Some of y'all are spoiled, and it's beginning to show. NBA fans, all of you, NBA fans, you get 82 games, you want to catch an attitude because your playoffs going to cool off three months. Man, you know what I give to have playoffs go on three months? It's called Texas high school football, baby, all right? I'd love to have that in college football. Don't tempt me. Make me the czar of college football. We're going to be playing meaningful football come November. All right. That's what we got on the CFP schedule. As you can see, I'm a little fired up about it. I'm a little fired up about people getting upset about playing more football. But I'm even more fired up to talk with Ruben Foster, who is playing pro football for the first time in four years. We're going to ask him what that means to him. Let's talk to Ruben. I'm pleased to be joined by Pittsburgh Maulers linebacker Ruben Foster. Ruben, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, RJ, man. How about yourself? I'm good, brother. Very excited to talk with you, uh, especially about playing football again. We have noted over the last three weeks that this is the first time that you've been able to play professional football in well over four years. How does that feel, dog? It feel great, man. It's, it's feel, I, I was, I was kind of nervous. Um, they're not there at first, but... You know, like like how God gave you gave you the skill since a kid. It's like riding a bike, and so I just feel overwhelmed and and it feel unbelievable to be honest. I think you're in a great spot with Coach Horton and Jaron Horton. I uh, got to see Jaron Horton's defense up close last year, and y'all still playing that same sort of stifling, run stuffing defense. It's very exciting to see. How did it feel for you to go out there and hit somebody that ain't on your football team for the first time in years? It feel it feel good, man. I'm I'm happy to be a part of this defense because it's awesome. Because Ray Horton and 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 Jaron Horton is a great they great a great coaches. They have great coaching staff, and just to be able to just go out there and hit somebody that's not on my team, shit. I'm so I'm sorry. You go cool. uh, shoot, shoot. Um, it, it feel amazing, bro, because. I love football, man. I, I've been doing this since a, a kid, man. It's, it's a dream, and it's a, it's a it's a real activity. And you know, most people aren't blessed to be in my position. Only one percent, and I'm I'm highly favored, and I'm, I'm I'm not taking it for granted. And you know, it's it's, it's it feels great, bro. I hear it, Doug, and I can see it in your play. Uh, but I'm really curious about your daily routine because one of the things that I'm very interested in is not necessarily just your talent, because we know you're a talented football player, but what's day-to-day like? What's it like between practices, between games? Um, To be honest, um, it's just a lot of treatment, recovery, because I haven't played in four years. Even when I haven't played in four years, it's working out, um, hydrating. I got, I went and got a whole Norma Tech uh, system, a whole game-ready system, a whole whatever, like, no. just I'd be in my bed chilling, 
watching my players, watching um, film from practice to uh, to the game to see what I what I messed up on and what I can do better. Um, how can I what what position a movement that I can do better? That, um, like from 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 my injury, of course, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I sit here and I just really be practicing in the mirror. like. <laughs> well, let me let me jump in there and fill people in. Uh, May 2019, I believe, you blow out your ACL and your LCL, right, in camp uh, with Washington Commanders, and you've been fighting back from there. At one point, we it was really bad. We thought that you had severed an artery at that point. So just your journey back has been something to behold. But also, you're talking about basically making your life boring, which is what football players need to be doing right your life need to be real boring it need to be straight up in that room on that rig watching netflix or whatever right man what what, what you say watch netflix get your body right because that's in the day tomorrow you got to do the same thing over again so it, 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 it's it's got its pros and its cons and guess what football make you happy man so if, you, if you're doing something to make you happy and it got great benefits after for for those reasons, then why not do it? And you know, I learned my lesson um for for um, over the years, over the four four years that I haven't been played playing. So and I'm I'm pretty I'm I'm cool. I'm straight for being bored being bored, bro. I'm enjoying life and 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 and, and getting my body back right for to play the sport that I love. So um yeah. <laughs> well, let me let me go in there, right? Because you from Roanoke, Alabama, right? Which is Tuskegee, they, Alabama, moved to Roanoke. Oh, my fault, my fault. All right, but but Bama, let's start there, yes, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. right. Yes, sir. You playing football? If you're not playing football, you think about playing football, and it feels, feels like what you was doing at Alabama, and one of the reasons that you got to be so good. I'm gonna just fill people in on what it was: 115 tackles in 2016, Buckets Award winner unanimous All-American linebacker. I mean, you got the goods, and it feels like a lot of that had to do with the structure that was in place at Alabama. So I'm curious, what did you learn from Coach Saban inside of that structure? Um, To be honest, it's, re- it's really the same structure that, that I'm doing now, and that's guys taking care of their bodies and implementing um, all the things that that's off the field that Coach Saban installed into you. And – and that's a lot from being a man to being a great um guy with character with the um the psychiatrists that they provide us. It's just overall and then just living life and just being a hard worker and just knowing that when you hurt, it's not all because you hurt don't mean that you gotta sit down. Mm. You just gotta keep working and pushing through and you'll see different results. Just trust the process, like Bama say, trust the process and everything that you trusted within, you'll feel comfortable and you don't have to stress on the next step of your life. And that's what I say Coach Saban really and the whole staff, to be honest, because he did well with just the whole organization. Um, just just putting that and in, installing that in, in the guys. I'm really fascinated by the particular four years for which you were at Alabama. And we talk about some hitters, right? It's not just that you were on that defense. You also had yeah. defense with Reggie Ragland. You played with Landon Collins. Kirby Smart was still coordinating the defense. That's how good y'all were. And had a bunch of these Bama boys, TJ Yeldon, Bo Scarborough, yourself, just overgrown dudes that could go put their hands on anybody they wanted to. But I'm looking at that dude from Uly, Florida, from, uh, you know, lower Georgia, and I'm asking, dog, what was it like to try to – well, I'm not going to put it that way. Were you giving Derrick Henry the business or was he giving you the business? To be honest, we were giving each other both the both the business, okay. <laughs> like because Derrick Derrick Henry is 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 not a joke. Now um, he is what he is. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So don't think all because the big Foster hitting tackling machine missile every day at practice going to get Derrick Henry what um making Derrick Henry better. No, Derrick Henry making me better as well. So <laughs> like, like I gotta get there six like six three. 200 and something pounds. 50. Running like a four, a four three. Mm-hmm. Like four two. Like, come on, man. You want to hit that? <laughs> Every no, day. Nah, dog. I don't. I really don't. <laughs> right? I'm going to pick another battle. I'll pick it. You know exactly. what? I'm better exactly. off going to try to spill that offensive lineman than I am trying to hit this man. Somebody else come make it. <laughs> I'm Say it. Hey. Made my four. hey, safety, come fill. Come, come. That's your man. Come fill. Like that, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be looking over my shoulder going, hey, somebody else go get him. 
Uh, Ruben, Bird. man, this has been great. I'm really, really having a good time with you, but I want to get you out here on a high note, dog. You're playing football at a level that a lot of folks did not know was this good until last year. And now they've seen what people are capable of. Folks with a similar story like Kevante Turpin last year, right? Have a story like yours, wins MVP, makes the Dallas Cowboys roster and ends up not just a pro bowler, but an all pro by his peers. Do you think that that could happen for you? It's, it's a possibility, man. All I got to do is keep my head down, keep okay. stay focused and stay humble. I, you know, I'm always humble. I love to be humble. I don't like to whatever, you know, I, I show it in my play. Um, but yes, I, I picture myself in, in those shoes like him. And um, all I just need, just like him, have the fans on my back, the whole organization, everything to keep me, keep me full throttle keep me full throttle and you know just the love and the, and the passion that other guys got for the sport as well will, will help a lot with that too which the Maulers have so mm -hmm. you know I know that we lost two games or whatever but we still have that passion of never quitting that's what's up dog uh not that bad for a dude that, ain't, that lost two games in two years 2015 2016 and then people want to catch attitude about it <laughs> I'm just saying you know but if you're in this league you want to play football and I got to say, you're playing for a defensive coordinator and head coach that I could not respect more. And I was really, really overjoyed to hear Coach Horton speaking so well of you week one following that loss. I want good things for you, dog. And I appreciate you taking time to talk with us here on the number one college football show. Thank you, Thank you RJ, bro. I appreciate you for giving me time, bro. My thanks to Lakin Littman and Ruben Foster for joining our Friday show, which you guys have demonstrated that you really, really enjoy. I'm glad because, well, frankly, you're downloading it in record numbers. Keep that up. It really helps the show, and it really makes my bosses happy. Again, my thanks as always to our lead producer, Tyler Wojak, our senior producer, Catherine Donnelly, our director, Kyle Holly, our social media maven, Javion Duncan, our lead of screening, Jack Coakley, and our production assistant, Kiara Santana. I'm the host, RJ. We will see y'all next Wednesday. Deuces. Thank you for watching the number one college football show. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that you don't miss any of the best college football coverage in America.